So far, we have done quite a number of examples about the design of column under different circumstances. There are short and slender column under the brace and unbrace conditions subjected to the moment acting in the major axis or minor axis or both axis. This leads to nine different cases that you can deal with a typical column. If you observe the calculation steps that we have discussed previously, you will see significant differences in terms of the calculation steps you need to each different cases. It may seem to be confusing. However, if you look from the fundamentals, the calculation steps work on basis of several simple rules and principles. These videos will demonstrate to you the differences in terms of the calculation steps when it comes to different types of column. Without further ado, let us get started. This diagram summarizes the calculation steps for various types of column. We have short column and slender column. Each of them can be classified into brace and unbrace structure. In terms of the loading, the moment may be subjected in one single axis or in both axis. Same goes to the slender column. When the moment is acting in one single axis, it can be in the major axis or the minor axis. The main difference between the two it will be in the calculation steps when come to the column dimensions you will have to refer to the dimensions of the column for the axis that the moment is acting on. Specifically, when the moment is acting in the major axis, we are looking at the bigger dimensions of the column. Whereas when the moment is acting in the minor axis, the smaller dimensions of the column is used. This applies to the calculations to determine the E node, where the H here is referring to the dimensions of the column, where the moment is acting on. Not only that, when it comes to determining the effective depth, as well as determining the D2, you will have to be careful with the B and H. Also, when it comes to calculating the m per b h square f c k, this h square here not to be confused. If you find it very difficult to differentiate them, you are recommended to sketch the cross sections of the column, get the dimensions, and also get the moment acting onto the cross sectional area. If you are dealing with this moment, that means the dimensions it will be this. Where else if you are dealing with this moment, that means you are referring to these dimensions. At the end of the day, if you solve the questions graphically, it doesn't matter whether the moment is acting in the major axis or in the minor axis everything go back to the dimensions as per what you have sketched in the cross-sectional area. Now, having different types of column established, let us look into the calculation step. First, we deal with the short column with the moment acting in one single axis. Short column only involves the first order moment. That leads to you the calculations to determine the M02 as demonstrated here. Based on the M02 obtained, apply into the equations, you get the MED. Based on the MED obtained, 
refers to the design chart you get AS, FYK, BH, FCK and then find the AS which is the amount non-reinforcement required in the column as demonstrated in the calculation steps here once you have obtained the AS then you will proceed with checking the link and the serviceability requirements for the column specifically we are talking about these two set of requirements for the longitudinal reinforcement bars there is a minimum numbers of reinforcement bar required minimum size of the reinforcement bar minimum bar area and also maximum bar area in terms of the requirements for the shelling we have minimum bar size maximum spacing under normal circumstances and maximum spacing at the joint region or at the lapping area and so on so far what you see in terms of the flow here the design calculations for the short columns is relatively simple as compared to the other types of column next we look at the slender column subjected to uni SL moment the calculation steps here seems to be quite identical to the short column except that it involves the second order moment these are the second order moment due to different responses of the column under the brace and unbrace conditions the calculations to determine the MED vary slightly here you will need to be careful whether the column is braced or unbraced the equations to generate MEDs are given here once you have acquired the first order and the second order moment you will use them to generate the MED and then subsequently apply the MED into the chart in order to find the AS now this process may seem similar to the process here except that there is a looping process in order to confirm the second order moment M2 you see in the early stage of the design of the column we do not know the amount of reinforcement bar in the column however in the process of determining the M2 you need the correction factor KR when this KR here is calculated on basis of the AS provided since in the early stage of the design you do not know the actual amount of reinforcement bar you will start with assuming the KR equals to 1.0 that means at this stage the M2 generated here is not the real M2 yet it is in fact an assumed M2 as a result of the assumed KR equals to 1.0 later when you generate the MED it will be on the basis of the M2 that you assume now this MED here is also not the real MED in the early stage of the design we assume KR first to get the assume M2 and then the assume MED for us to kick start the calculations process we need to confirm the calculated MED here that we use to determine the AS are valid so that we will know the AS provided later is adequate so in the first round you assume the KR M2 and MED this brings to an assume AS substitute back into the equations for you to generate the real KR from the KR we recalculate the M2 
We're going to observe the KR calculated now to be equals to the KR that we have assumed. If the calculated KR is the same as the KR that we have assumed, that means this MED that we assume is valid. And therefore, the provided reinforcement bar here is also valid. Now, in the case that the calculated KR is different from what we have assumed, then you will need to generate a new M2. Having the new M2 calculated, this will lead to modifications in terms of the MED as a result of the modifications of the M2. Having the MED modified, you get a new AS. And then look the process of substituting the AS and find the new KR. That means there will be a looping process here until the KR is more or less constant. Only then you can conclude that the provided amount of reinforcement is adequate. From here, you can see the main differences between designing a short column and a slender column subjected to the moment in one single axis. The first difference it will be the involvement of the second order moment for the slender column, but there is no second order moment in the short column. The second difference it will be there is a looping process for the slender column until reaching to a constant KR, where else there is no looping process for the short column. Since M2 is the second order moment, when short column does not involve M2, that means you don't have to do the looping process. Having the AS determined, you will proceed with checking the link and the serviceability requirements as per given in this slide. This process and this process will be the same. Now having the uni SL loading columns understood, we will look into the column subjected to moment in both axes. First, we deal with the short column. This time, we will have moment in both axes. First, you will need to start with determining the first order moment. Since you have moment acting in both axes, that means when calculating the M02, you will need to get the individual M02 for the major and the minor axis. Since you're going to use M02 to compute the MED for the design of column, now, if you compare the short column subjected to uni axial loads versus the biaxial load, you will see the differences happening here. For uni axial loads, once you have computed M02, you may go straight to determine the MED based on the equation and then proceed with the calculations. However, for the biaxial bending column, you need to go through a process to check whether the biaxial bending can be ignored. We are talking about checking these four items. You need to fulfill both of these items plus either of these two items. If this is fulfilled, that means you don't have to incorporate the biaxial bending. When it is not required, you can go straight to determine the MED for the major and the minor axis, apply them separately into the design chart, and work out the AS for the major and the minor axis. Since the major and the minor axis are both in the same column, you will have to consolidate the amount of reinforcement bar, 
providing you sufficient AS in both axes. Pay attention on the reinforcement bar that falls in the neutral axis in any of the axes. Normally what we are going to do is to imagine the arrangement of the reinforcement and then determine the effective amount of reinforcement in that particular axis. Once the AS is confirmed, then you may proceed with checking the link and the serviceability requirement. This is when the biaxial bending can be ignored. Now in the case that not fulfilling these four items, that means the biaxial bending cannot be ignored. As a result, the calculation step will go this route. In this case, you know that it is required. Then, your next step it will be to generate a new MED, taking into the account of the influence of the other assets. In order to do that, you will need to determine which side it will be more critical. This is determined by comparing the ratio in terms of the moment against the effective depth of both assets. Whichever giving you the greater value will be the critical site. If the major axis is the critical site, the calculations of the M prime ED, it will be on the basis of the major axis plus the effects of the other side. Similarly, if you found that the minor axis will be the dominant, then you will take the minor axis moment plus the influence of the other axis. This leads to you a new MED known as M prime ED. This step is very important, as you can see from the design calculation step in our previous example. You see a significant increase from the MED to M prime ED. You cannot simply use the MED, as this would have underestimated the loading adding onto the column. It is only when you have calculated M prime ED, then you're going to use this in the design chart for you to find the AS. Having the AS determined, there is one more step that you need to deal with, which is using the equations given by the Eurocode to check whether the provided amount of reinforcement bar is adequate in overall. What you're going to do here it will be using the AS provided, which you have to consider the layout of the reinforcement and then to determine ultimately the effective reinforcement area in both the majors and the minor axis. Pay attention for the reinforcement that falls at the neutral axis of certain particular axis. This might lead to a situation that the effective amount of reinforcement bar in the major and the minor axis might not be the same. Now, having the AS for the major and the minor axis determined, you will use the design chart to work out the moment resistance in the major and in the minor axis. Also, get the ratio between the load versus the axial capacity of the column for you to work out the factor A as referred from the table here. One more thing that you need to work out, it will be the MED to be used in the equation. You have to be careful that you need to remove the M due to the imperfections from the non-critical side. For example, if you found that the minor axis it will be more critical, when you need to calculate the MED for the major and the minor axis, 
the MED will have the M imperfections incorporated in the minor axis where else the MED here will have to remove the moment due to the imperfections and then test the numbers the whole thing here needs to be less than 1.0 if it is more than 1.0 that means you have to add in the reinforcement bar more than what was proposed previously and then determine the effective bar areas in both the majors and the minor axis for you to work out the moment resistance for the major and the minor axis until the calculated value here to be less than 1.0 only then you can conclude the amount of reinforcement bar in the column. After that, you will proceed with the checking on the link and the serviceivity requirement. Now, if you observe the calculation step for the shop column, you will see there are three loops. First is when the moment is acting in the unit SL directions. Second route is that there will be by axial bending, but when come to the by axial bending check, the by axial bending can be ignored. With that, this leads to the second route. And then the third route it will be you have to consider the by axial bending effects, leaving you to the third route. Same principles goes to the slender column. If you see the diagram here and the diagram here, they seem to be identical, except that there is a process of looping until you finalize the KR, M2, and the MED. Now, in the case that there is by axial moments acting onto the column, before you use the MED in the design chart to determine the AS, you will have to do the by axial bending check. Use these four items to determine whether the by axial bending can be ignored. If the by axial bending can be ignored, then you're going to work out the MED based on the equations depending whether the column is braced or unbraced to work out the MED for both major and the minor axis and then apply them separately in the design chart to work out their individual AS here you will have two AS then you're going to propose a layout of reinforcement so that the effective AS for both axes are greater than the AS as required in their respective axes. Once this is confirmed, then you may proceed with checking the links and the serviceivity requirements. Now, if you do the by axial bending check, you realize that the by axial bending cannot be ignored. Then your next step it will be to determine the M prime ED, taking into the account of the influence of the other axis. First, you will need to determine the ratios to see which side it will be more critical. If the major axis is more critical, you will use the MED from the major axis plus the influence of the minor axis. Where else, if the minor axis is more critical, the M prime ED it will be on the basis of the minor axis plus the influence of the major axis. This process is important as the calculated MED by taking into the considerations of the other axis would be higher than what was initially estimated. Without this process, 
you might underestimate the moment acting onto the column. Having the M prime ED determined, you're going to apply it in the design chart in order to work out the AS. The calculated AS here, you need to know whether it is on basis of the assumed KR or not. Normally, the first round we will start with assuming the KR. Therefore, the calculated AS even though after the computations of the M prime ED, you're going to look back in order to check the KR as well as to finalize the M2, which is the second order moment. That means this entire process here will be looped until coming back to a constant M2 and also MED. Only then you can finalize the AS provided. Having the AS provided confirmed, now you're going to imagine the layout of the reinforcement in the column. Determine the effective amount of reinforcement in both major and the minor axis. Especially those reinforcement bar falls at the neutral axis of certain axis must not be considered contributing to the moment resistance in that particular axis. This may result in different amount of reinforcement bar effective to certain major axis. And then, based on the effective AS, you work out the moment resistance for their particular axis. This is done by using the design chart. And then find the ratio A based on the table and also determine the MED acting on the major and the minor axis. You will need to remove the moment due to the imperfections on the non-critical side. How do you know which side it will be non-critical? Remember in the calculation step here to determine the M prime ED. The ratio will conclude to you which side it will be more critical. The M due to imperfections, it will remain in the critical side, whereas the non-critical side, the computations of the MED, which is on basis of this, particularly when come to the computations of M02 and M01, you will need to remove the M due to imperfection and then work out a value for the entire expressions. Make sure this whole thing does not exceed 1.0. If it exceeds 1.0, that means you're going to adding additional reinforcement bar and then work out the new moment resistance based on the effective amount of reinforcement bar in their respective axis. Recalculate the value and you're going to continue the process until you reach to a state that the number is less than 1.0. Only then the AS provided is finalized. After that, you will have to check the link and the serviceability requirements. Make sure the link and the service view requirements are all fulfilled so that the design of the column is safe. As you can see from the flow chart here, there are at least six routes. The first one it would be the short column subjected to moment in one single axis. Second route, short column subjected to by axial bending but do not require by axial bending check that give you the second root. Third root, it will be the by axial bending check is required. As for the slender column, you have another three roots. You need axial root, by axial root but not required to check by axial bending and also by axial load and by axial bending needs to be checked. 
and then the diagram here can be further expand into the nine different types of the column which in the computations of the MED for the slender column you have brace and unbrace structure the equations of the MED use are different you can imagine one whole set here for the brace structures and another whole set here for the unbrace structure you may also further expand this where the moment acting in one single axis can be of the major axis or of the minor axis now dealing with the major axis when referring to the column dimensions you are looking in the wider side of the column where else dealing with the minor axis you are dealing with the shorter side of the column dimension so ultimately if you would like to expand you will have these two separated now if you fully expand everything you will expect to have four roots for the shop columns another four roots for the slender and brace column plus another four root for the slender and unbrace column that gives you a total of 12 different cases for the columns now having the calculation steps principle understood I believe by now you have no problem dealing with any of the load cases it may seem to be complicated but you see that they are actually working on a few simple rules you only need to grab the rules and apply them in your design calculations with that this concludes the revision part for the design of column